Good morning, everybody. Today, I'm going to show you how to cast a concrete step. I just got done casting the step, installing the step, and I'm going to show you all steps required to make these steps, uh, make the mold, casting the concrete. So here's a before, and of course, here's after. So let's take a look at before. Now, I'm going to take a, a jackhammer and get rid of all this concrete and reuse uh, these rebar forms. But let's take a look at what this thing is. This is a two inch by two inch stock, and it's eight inches long. And underneath it, there's some one and a half inch angle iron, six inches long, with two holes drilled in it. And then of course we have half inch rebar coming across. So those are the three items you have to buy and fabricate and weld yourself if you're gonna start from scratch. Uh, luckily, I, I have something I can start with, but uh, I could possibly fabricate these things myself if I really needed to. So this step is, uh, uh, the concrete part of it is 46 and a quarter, and then flange to flange is 46 and a half. So you can see there's an eighth of an inch and an eighth of an inch. The flange is welded out past the, 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 the two inch square stock by an eighth of an inch on each end. Uh, the dimensions here, this is 12 inches by, like I said, 46 and a quarter, and then it's four inches thick, and on the front, I got a, at two inches, I put a 45 degree in here. So we have two inches of 45 and two inches of, uh, of straight face on it. Put this one over. And see, get it from a better view. That's what goes inside the concrete stair tread. Here's this side view. You can kind of see how it has a, a little piece cut out on the side, and that's why I'm trying to go for it 12 inches. And here we go, here's the side of the mold, and you can kind of see the piece and everything. You know, if I was going to do this over again, I, I built this frame and then I, I, I filled in the center of the frame with this piece of uh, wood. I kind of wish I'd have had the wood go all the way across the frame, and so we wouldn't have any of these gaps. Okay, I have the rebar frame sitting on the lower half of the mold. Just take a nice little look at it. And uh, I want you to notice that, that when I welded this tab, it comes out like about an eighth of an inch. So the, the step is going to be flush with the, this uh, two, two inch by two inch thing with this tab coming out an extra eighth of an inch. Now here's the mold with the top half of the mold on here. And we can see that our, our thing's in here. Cut a hole in the bottom. You can see there's like a little hole in the bottom to where this thing can stick out, the tab can stick out. Of course you see how it's like flush. The, the frame is flush with the back of the two by two. So uh, here we go. Kind of get, get a good look at exactly how this is. And uh, I think you could easily construct something like this yourself out of uh, some two by fours and some uh, two by sixes and some plywood. As far as choosing the, the concrete, uh, my suggestion is crack resistant concrete. This has fiberglass fibers mixed in and it's supposed to make it to where you don't need rebar and it'll make it a lot stronger and crack resistance. This is a, a 4,000 PSI. And, uh, and then we also have something that costs twice as much made by the same company called QMAX. So this is 6,500 PSI and it'll harden up in three hours and, but you can still work with it for one hour. Like I say, this costs twice as much and this also is crack resistant, and this also has uh, the, the fiberglass fibers in it. And it, uh, I know it says it's corrosion resistant. It looks like really good stuff there. I, I think uh, this is really the way to go, but I think either one of them work. And when we're talking the difference between 6,500 PSI and 4,000 4, PSI, the, the whole point of this isn't really the PSIs, but how long it takes to cure. Now, with, uh, with this 4,000 PSI stuff, you should pro you're supposed to let it stay wet. You know, not take out the form. You put this in the form, and then you maybe coat it with some uh, burlap, wet burlap or some plastic, and keep it going for like a week to cure, where the Q-Max would uh, be uh, just as hard within just a few days. But you, you definitely want to water cure this stuff too for at least a few days. And the, the more you water cure it, the stronger it gets, and you can actually by doing a good water curing, you can make the, 
the concrete twice as strong. So you'll, you'll definitely want to spend lots of time letting the concrete properly cure because that's probably the reason my old steps fell apart. Since we only are going to need about two bags of, of concrete, I figured uh, uh, just a little bit more than two bags will, will fill the entire form. I'm just going to use a, a wheelbarrow and a shovel. And uh, you can do about 80 to maybe 100 pounds in one wheelbarrow load without too much trouble. Say to put three quarts of water for an 80 pound sack of concrete. So I put three quarts of water in here and I'm going to put the concrete in here, mix it up and show you what it looks like. This is what the concrete looks like when you use the, the recommended amount of water. You can see it looks just like dirt and uh, you know not even uh, very wet dirt to just barely damp dirt. You'd expect uh, dirt in a garden to even be have more moisture than this. And uh, when I made my last one, I didn't, I, I just put a little bit more water than this because it says a maximum of a gallon. I put, you know, one more quart and it was still really dry like this. And when I put it in my mold, there's a lot of voids and I took a, a mallet and some uh, pieces of wood and I banged on it and banged on it and tried to pack it all down and get all the voids out. And there's still some voids left. It didn't look pretty. And so then when I did the, the next bag on the top half of it, I added more water and it worked a lot better and it's a little bit more like traditional concrete. So I'm going to add, I'm probably going to add two more quarts of water to this because I need to get it to where it's, it looks wet. It doesn't have to flow. It's not going to run, but it's got to at least have a, a little bit of wetness to it. This is just like dry dirt. Okay, here we are at one gallon per 80 pounds. And you can see it's better. It's definitely... Uh, at least it doesn't look like it's dry. It's definitely moist. And you can kind of see if you pack it, it'll pack down pretty well. And I'm going to add just a little bit more water here than this because I need it to, to flow and to pack in a little bit better because I, I don't want to have any voids. Here we are. This is with five quarts of water. And now you can actually see some wetness in it. There you go. You see how that's like, like I hope I have the camera. See how it's kind of nice and muddy in there? And you can kind of see, I mean, you can kind of see, there it goes, it kind of has like a jello look to it. There we go. You can see a little jiggly to it. Yeah, here we go. That, that's the way I like it right here. We're, we'll try this because I don't want to make the same mistake I, I made last time and not uh, have enough water in there. Put the, the first load of concrete in here and uh, it seems to fill up the form quite, quite, quite a bit. My calculation said that it needs uh, more than two bags. So, so what it is, we have air in here. So we have to like this thing down. You see how it kind of beats down, gives a nice shiny finish. So anyway, we got to beat this thing down, get all the air out of here. And then we'll put the next uh, load of cement in there. Okay, I screeded this thing off level with a, with a two by four scraped along. And now, if you notice, let me just show you what's going on. Like if we gently rub along here, you can see how it gets kind of wet. It has a wet, wet, wet fit to it. And we're going to go through there. We're going to smooth this thing all off, get it really nice. Then after I got it really nice, I bought a, a tool that will go around the edges. And we'll do the edges here. So let me go work on this stuff for a while. And, and I'll show you what it looks like after I'm done. Well, there we go. I, I smoothed it out until all the voids are out. And as you do it, you know, kind of a, the more liquidy, watery uh, cement comes up out of the aggregate. And then I took my, uh, my edge tool and I went all the way around the edge and gave it a nice defined edge. Now I'm going to very carefully flatten it out on the top and then we'll be about done. Well, there we go. I just got done smoothing all out. I was kind of gently uh, floating it from the middle towards the edges trying to get all the trawl marks out, get everything flat, all the edges, any little imperfection, get it perfectly smooth, perfectly flat. And uh, well, it's a lot of fun. And I'd be willing to bet after watching this video, you can't wait to be getting out here and pouring your own concrete step. Okay, it's been a few hours. The surface still appears moist, but it's hard. See, here's a, a clump here. nice hard clump but uh, anyway but the thing is is I say harden I don't say dry 
because concrete doesn't actually dry. The hardening is a chemical reaction to where water mixes with the concrete and it causes it to solidify. And so, like I say, water is a key ingredient. I mean, concrete can actually harden underwater. And it's not a matter of drying out at all. And the, in fact, we don't want it to dry. We want it to stay wet because the, the longer it stays wet, it cures and makes it stronger and stronger and stronger. So if we were just to let this thing dry out and whatever and, uh, and use it, it would only be half as strong as if, as if we cure it properly with water. So I'm going to take a, 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 some cloth, a towel, and put it over top of here. I'm going to leave it in the forms. Now the forms will help keep moisture in and make it to where it doesn't dry out. And uh, we'll, we'll keep it wet and, uh, you know, at least three days to, to really get it good, good and uh, strong. And maybe even seven days uh, wouldn't be out of order if you want something like this to be really, really strong. Okay, now it's nice and wet. We got this wet cloth over top of here. Here we are, fresh out of the mold. And... Uh, of course, the top side is nice and smooth. The bottom looks nice and smooth. Remember I took that, uh, I used a wetter mixture and beat it so we don't have any voids. But of course, you know, when I put this top part in here, I didn't actually take and beat it like I should have. So now I learned a valuable lesson. Le lesson one is, of course, you need to, to make sure there's enough water in, in, the, in the concrete mix to where it's kind of a, got a plasticky look to it. And then number two, you have to beat it and beat it and beat it with a, a two by four and a mallet. But uh, this is looking pretty good. I think uh, I'm on a nice schedule here for a step a week. Well, I picked up a, a chain hoist and a stronger eye hook that'll definitely handle a couple hundred pounds. We, uh, you can see it, it, go, it says up and, and down. So there's down. Let's go put that up. By the way, I do this one hand and get this thing all jacked up. Look at that go. Okay, the steps ready. Uh, it's in position, it's getting ready to be mounted. Now I'll set up some sort of a, a scaffolding and a pulley system. And, and I cheated. Uh, I, I, I found it was a lot easier. I asked somebody to help me. So I had some help from my neighbor and we managed to pick this thing up and put it down here. Let me go show you what I got here. We got the, the ladder up here. Of course, one leg a lot longer than the other leg. Everything's centered. Now I got, you can kind of see the, the metal flange and you can kind of see the rusty area where it's supposed to go. And the trick is to get, get this thing aligned above that and then lower it down. Job well done. Everything's all completed. Look how nice that baby looks. And, and for comparison, this is what it looked like before. Anyway, I, I'm, uh, I'm going to sit here and bask in my glory. And now I'm going to prepare my mold and I'm going to start uh, casting the next step. And uh, well, I've only got 12 on this flight and 12 on that flight to do and uh, it'll be all done.